This little lathe is made in Austria, and I think it is probably fairly expensive. And it's precision, and here's the little uh, four-jaw chuck. There's a three-jaw chuck on there right now, and a faceplate, that's aluminum. This is steel. Notice that my tape ruler is actually quite a bit bigger than the... Uh, Chuck than the chuck, isn't it? Now the little motor on the back here actually looks about like a sewing machine motor. And uh, like I say, I've never used it, but uh, and I don't think I intend to. There is also a uh, milling attachment, and that goes on something like this. I've got the complete manual for that. Is, it, is that in the picture or not? Maybe not. But there's the milling head. Emco. I'm zoomed in so much I don't know if I'm, I'm showing up or not. This is the milling table with a little vise. So if you want an all-in-one machine, something like this might do. It's a Emco Unimat 3. Got a little tiny steady rest. All kinds of tooling and attachments in this box. Clamps, centers, cutting tools, complete manual, and I don't know what else is still down in this box here. We've got a few other uh, attachments. I'd have to get the manual out to even see what they are. I don't remember. But I'm only showing you this to show you that lathes come in many different sizes, and if you're uh, in a condo, Working in a bedroom, you set this right up next to your wife's sewing machine. But don't get chips on the rug, she wouldn't like that. Now let's talk about uh, what to look for in a used lathe as far as the condition is concerned. I think I've covered most of the things I wanted to cover in regards to talking about different makes and brands of lathes and, and the sizes and everything. We talked about the swing and the length of the bed. And, and you know if you're a gunsmith you got to make sure you got uh, a lathe that's long enough uh, for your gun barrels or whatever you're going to do. Uh, if you're just doing a little model making you know might, you might be interested in one of those lathes or that little lathe I just showed you out in the garage. But uh, as far as condition uh, if it's a real old lathe and it's been in a factory you can be sure that it's pretty well used and maybe even worn out. If it was in production for many years a, a lathe that was used in production I would avoid it because they're just everything about them is going to be worn out just like an old Ford. Now if it was in a tool room and it was used by real good machinists they took better care of things and then not every lathe was used every day or all day long so some of that might be in better uh, condition. So uh, uh, if you don't mind a big old heavy lathe that has flat belts you know from 1910 uh, you can uh, you can get something like that. Some of those were run off line shafts originally and then they were modified with a motor in, in later years. I don't care for them but it might be something that you could use if uh, especially as a starter lathe and you could trade up. But as far as condition uh, and and what comes with the lathe. Check to see that it, do you have a, you know a face plate. Are there several chucks with it? A four jaw and a three jaw. Are there tailstock chucks and centers and uh, is there a taper attachment if you require that because uh, it's going to be very expensive if you have to uh, buy any of those parts or uh, accessories. If there's a set of uh, tool posts, uh, different tool posts and tool post holders or a Loris type quick change tooling, that's a big plus. Is the motor wired for your basement? Is it 110 or is it 220? If, if it's a three phase you're going to have a three phase converter. This machine uh, is three phase and I got a three phase converter on it. It's around the back side. It works very well. It's just one of those little ones, a, a static converter they call it and uh, about the size of a cigar box. If you remember what a cigar box looked like, I don't know if they make them anymore. 
uh, the other, other lathe over there is a 110 volt so it plugs right into any wall. Now check to see how much damage there is to the ways. If it came out of a school often you're going to see that everything is chewed up in this area. Also if it came out of a school you're going to find that and this one did come out of a school that often there's going to be damage right in this area of the compound. It's kind of dark right there where the, the kids have run this into the chuck. Check to see how much play there is. Grab the tool post and pull everything back and forth to see how badly the screws and the nuts are worn. Some of that can be taken up with uh, by tightening the gibbs and maybe it's just been neglected and needs to be adjusted. But if everything is worn out in here as far as the screws, then that needs to be replaced. Those are left hand threads by the way, so they're not easy to, to deal with. Um, it, has this thing been out in a, in a garage, unheated garage? Is everything rusty? If you got a lot of rust down here, even with a little steel wool, it, it might not clean up all that well. Now a real old lay that has been in production and in use for uh, forever, the uh, bed and the ways actually wear, and so does the carriage for that matter, and it's almost sway backed. So as you approach the headstock where it, gets, it was used the most, the uh, carriage literally goes down a few thousands and you are no longer on center and you will not be uh, turning straight. You're going to get a taper that you can't deal with. Forget about sending these in someplace and having them reground or refitted because it would cost you more than what it was worth. Check the headstock bearings. You could put a long bar in here and wiggle that back and forth. And, and uh, Now if you're in somebody's basement and, and you know the owner he might be able to tell you about it or if you know. It's nice to buy one from somebody you know or that you know the reputation of, of the firm that had it and uh, you can determine whether or not it's in good condition. Even if you're paying a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars or something like a uh, like like that for a machine, you got to consider that a chuck would be five hundred dollars if you bought one. Also, fifteen hundred dollars isn't that much money in this economy. Maybe it is in your home, but when you think about it, that you know people waste, and I emphasize the word waste. They buy their big suburban trucks. I saw one at Cabello's the other day. There was a suburban. And we were guessing the price on it. I guessed forty thousand. Well, it was fifty-two thousand dollars for a truck. And some people think nothing of spending that kind of money on vehicles and tobacco and and uh, cocaine. So uh, splurge a little and get what you want while you're young. I waited a little bit too long in my life to buy some of this stuff. I wish I would have had it when I was a little bit younger. And for some of you, I know it's going to be a battle with your wife because they want a new chair and an ottoman or something crazy like that and you want a lathe. Start your own little slush fund. I'm fortunate to have a wife that doesn't care that I have a hobby and uh, have all this stuff. And, and as, as much as this might look to some of you that don't have much, uh, everything in this basement probably is worth ten thousand uh, dollars or less and that's the price of a used car. Now, uh, as far as condition, uh, I got a little bit sidetracked there, didn't I? Um, if you can tell if a machine is worn out, uh, if it came out of General Motors and it was used in production or in a tool room, you know, that, that thing's going to be worn out. Schools, uh, you're going to see the abuse that I just described, but yet the lathes in a school set idle 95% uh, of the time and all summer and all night. You know, we don't have three shifts running them. So sometimes uh, you're going to see the abuse that I told you right in this area, but overall the machines are sound and as schools are uh, throwing everything away and selling it cheap at auction or whatever, and uh, this machine came out of a school, uh, sometimes you can get a pretty good buy because some people don't even know what these machines are anymore. But there's usually one or two other guys there that's going to bid against you, that's, so that's always a problem. But uh, uh, if you can get a bargain, buy it. 
I hope this little discussion here, which I rambled and I talked pretty long, uh, was helpful to, to those of you that want to know something about Lay's and s the size of Lay's and the, the different brands and, and the condition of the Lay's, that uh, this was uh, a help to you. I, I suppose this will have to be broken into two videos. I'm not sure how long I ran. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.